Hey, thank you and welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Keiji Kanazawa from Microsoft. I work in product and AI Foundry. If you're at the keynote session from Asha, she's my CVB boss, so I work in that org. And Nakumar is an engineer in the team. He's going to be showing some code in a little bit, which I'm sure most of you are excited to see. So here we are at the AI Engineer Conference. I'm sure you're learning about you know, all kinds of stuff, reinforcement learning, agents, SWE agents, evals, all kinds of stuff. And so we're all really excited, you know, at least I am, to get AI into the hands of people, right? And help people, whether it's for, for you know, your end users and your internal users. And so AI is you know, obviously where it's at, or I think it's where it's at, but it comes with a bunch of headlines that you've probably seen. And some of them, again, if you're at the keynote this morning with Simon, he showed some examples. So you know, it's very easy. Uh, it can be easy to trick chatbots into saying stuff that you don't necessarily want them to say. You can actually trick them into giving you information, uh, potentially, that you don't want you know, leaking out. Um, and you know, AI is built, like AI engineering, it's built on a whole ecosystem of different things, including Python packages, NPM packages, you know, other services that you may be using that, that are hosted, right? And of course, so this San Francisco, it's the home of self-driving cars. Uh, you know, they're, they're, this, this picture is showing like a, you know, it's a, it's a frame from a video clip where a self-driving car is, is, you know, driving happily right past a school bus with a stop sign on it, right? And if you think, you know, hey, is, you know, what does it have to do with me, you know, but, uh, you, you, that this is a one test that you can kind of think of in terms of whether it's something you built or thinking you're th something you're thinking of building. Again, it, it, it's really easy to you know, kind of get around some of the defenses of, of the AI models. So for example, the prompt on the left, if you say how to loot a bank, um, a lot of the models will actually you know, refuse to answer, right? It'll say like, oh no, I can't help you with that. Uh, but if you, and, and some of the examples, if, if so, how many of you were at the Sanders workshop yesterday on prompt engineering, bread teaming. Yeah, so like, it's really like, if you preface that question with a whole, but like a, maybe a bit of a life story, you can maybe convince the AI to tell you something, you know, that, that, that it, it's not supposed to. And there are also other tricks, like uh, on, on the right hand side says Nava tool at Wo, which is how to loot a bank spelled backwards, right, right to left. And actually it turns out, that's one of the patterns that an AI, uh, AI model can be tricked into giving you uh, the answer. And so, and so you know, when, and the, especially like uh, and we touched on it this morning also, but like, of course, it's all agents, 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 2025 is a year of agents. Um, and there are a lot of concerns, like if you talk to businesses about how in this world of agents, AI can be, you know, tricked into, into different kind of uh, risks and stuff and different malfunctions. So, but we're here at the AI Engineer Conference, and you know, like what, what I want to kind of like convey is that we as engineers know how to do this stuff, right? So like engineers build bridges and dams that people trust. We build trucks and trains. And so AI engineering is early, so we've got a lot of work to do to get to the point where people trust AI as much as they trust you know, bridges. But you know, this is something we know how to do as engineers. We, we, build something, we iterate, we check it, we test it, you know, we continue to iterate. Um, and that's what we're here to show you uh, kind of how to do. And as engineers, you know, we also rely on not just ourselves, but other people, right? So uh, what we like to say is trust is a team sport. So when, we, when we're looking to build trustworthy AI systems, we depend on other people. So the engineers need to depend on people who have a lot of expertise in these areas, like, security and AI risk. So at Microsoft, we have a team called the Microsoft AI Red Team, which I've been working with for a few years, actually. They were one of the pioneers in identifying risks, you know, kind of, of, of AI in general, as well as LLMs. Like two, three years ago, they were already talking about, hey, you know what? Like these GPT-3, GPT-4 models, you can get them to do things that, you know, you really want, don't want them to do. So we partnered uh, in Azure AI Foundry with the AI Red Team to offer a solution that makes it easy for you, AI engineers, to basically have a teammate 
that can help you with the AI uh, red teaming. And so they, so the AI red team, they build a, a Python package called Pyrit, Py, P-Y-R-I-T, uh, and what we offer is a hosted version uh, and wrapped it around a easy to use SDK and also hosted dashboard to show you the evals you know, that come from this. And so here, uh, to show you how it works is now Kumar. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, here we go. So, low. And, uh, so this is the sample project that I'm going to run for you all. It's a simple rag on PostgreSQL uh, with an Azure samples. I'll have this QR code up again. Uh, so running locally right now, you can ask simple questions like this, and it's talking to a locally running model via Olama. Uh, well, tool call didn't work, live demos, right? <laughs> so in this piece, here's the logs for everything. But um, what we are trying to showcase is something called the semantic kernel uh, agent, which here's some code for it. Uh, it exposes, it takes in the Azure chat completions, and our Red Team plugin uh, is something that our SDK exposes. It has all the functions that are needed uh, for for an agent to tool call call into our Red Team agent to help someone with their Red Team process and then it's simple chat completions agent afterwards. Uh, so for now, I, I'm gonna start running this. Um, and when I run this, it will go through a few user inputs that I have hard-coded, and then we can jump into it in, in interactive mode. But the target for this semantic kernel is going to be the same RAG app, which uh, uh, is running locally. So once this loads in, yep. The first question, oops, live demos. <laughs> Looks like tool calling isn't working today. Uh, but anyways, so this call rag app can be switched into a call to any other application which takes in a query as an input and then responds with a string as an output. Uh, so internally we ask you to call your application which then you can run evaluations on. Uh, so in this agent mode, what would usually happen, I can scroll up to like a previous previous output. Uh, it's ran earlier, not, not lying to y'all. <laughs> uh, so these were the strategies which were available and then uh, use one of the, I asked it to like, hey, figure out, uh, get me a harmful prompt in the violence category, and then it gives, you, gives me some sort of prompt, and then I'm like, hey, send it to my target, and then this is what the target responds with, and then there is some details about some sort of ski goggles and products that are supposed to be answered uh, from our database, uh, and then I try to be like, hey, convert the prompt using base64, and the agent converts it, and then be like, hey, now send it to my target, and then the target response with something else. So this is an easy co-pilot style way for anyone to get started to red teaming an application. Now, we have we can take it a step further and run, uh, uh, run the whole scan end to end. And uh, this is how you would run the scan. You saw a little bit of code that KG showed earlier. Uh, so you usually set up your AI project, throw in the URL, and then you can set up, um, initialize it with your, uh, the, the URL and then your credentials. Uh, you can select risk categories. We have four of these risk categories right now. These map to our evaluators. So uh, this is how you set them up. If you don't include any, we include all by default. And then the number of objectives is the number of questions that uh, will be sent out to your application. Uh, and then the scan method looks like this. So you give it a scan name, you can give an optional output path which stores all the results there. And then uh, your attack strategies will include a list of different attack strategies. Uh, I'll pull up a docs page later on which has all the information about different risk strategies that you can use. Uh, there are combination strategies like easy which uh, does like flip, the one that 
you know, reverses the string and things like that. So there's also Mars. These are our simple converters, which are which live within Pirate, but then exposed via our SDK. So our SDK can offer it to people to use it easily. Uh, you can also compose an attack with two different strategies. So can we get a tense converted uh, strategy and then do a URL style conversion on it. So it does both and then sends it out. And then you pass in a target, a target which supposedly decided not to work today. Again, <laughs> called to the same application. Um, and uh, once you run this, you usually see an output which looks like this. So, whoops. I'm going to unplug the Ethernet cable. Okay, there we go. So yeah, so this is when I had it running yesterday with uh, GPT-40 as my model, and GPT-40 comes with a lot of security inbuilt within our Azure AI Foundry, so once you have all those guardrails up, it kind of was pretty good. Uh, it was a very small sample size, 160, I think I selected 10 different harm types, or like five harm types with a few categories, so none of them was able to break into, uh, into our application. But then I switched around and I used Phi 3, and with Phi 3, you can see the results show uh, five out of 40 in hate and fairness uh, was successful. So we can take a look at it, filter data based on what was successful, um, and then you can, you know, look at like what was the response that was determined as, you know, harmful in our from our evaluators. Um, and finally, we have one more uh, way of doing this. So initially, a lot of people might just be building models. You don't even have an application. You can directly call uh, the scan against an open Azure OpenAI config. So if your model is running on. Uh, or, uh, on Azure, you can set it up uh, as a target, which is just you know these three things. And then once you have these three things, you can run the whole scan. This scan runs against uh, the model directly and gives you a, an output. I guess this should be able to work. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I can probably run it here. There we go, so, yep, scan model, runs a direct model scan, um, and here I have some results from a pre-run, was prepared for this. So, <laughs> this is when 4.1, if you take off all the guardrails, here's the result. Uh, it says that 25% of uh, violence category was successful, and you know 20% of all the difficult complexity attacks were successful, and again, you can, filter on, on the data, see which was successful. Uh, and yep, there we go, lots of violence. And then this was the flip where like some sort of, you, we can see what strategy it was. I think it was a Caesar encoding strategy. And you can see that the assistant kind of decoded it. Uh, so we did not want that to happen, so we <laughs> marked it as successful attack. So. That's one of the things, and then here's the response when you set up all the guardrails uh, with four GPT-41 nano, and you can see that the difference is that we reduced our attack success by a little bit. So that's an overview of how things go uh, and how this scan is running. So it usually gives you an ETA, six minutes. We'll probably be running out of time by then, but. Yeah, as soon as this is done, it shoots you a, UR, a URL which will directly take you to this page. So that's safety evals and AI red teaming. Uh, I will be at the Microsoft booth uh, towards the end for questions. So back to you, KG. Yeah, thanks. So basically, you know, the rest of the talk is, is, is talking about essentially how this fits into an overall strategy, right? So that's. AI red teaming is a really important and you know uh, part of kind of your defenses and and kind of in your toolbox to be able to develop and deploy trustworthy AI systems. 
But it really, what you want to do is incorporate this within a whole, you know, kind of a, again, from the engineering mindset, a framework, you know, and kind of a process to, to get these things out, so, right? So first, what you want to do is before, you know, you develop, de develop like a production application that goes to customers, you want to, uh, you know, you want to kind of map out what are the kind of risks that, you know, we're, we're anticipating here? Is this an agent? Is it, you know, using kind of like external data or internal customer data? You want to think about what are the, you know, kind of the risks that, you know, your app is going to have, plan for it, start to implement the guardos in the first place, and then do the evaluations of which, you know, red teaming is one of those uh, possibilities, right? So within Azure AI Foundry, we have a suite of evaluators, both for quality check, quality <laughs> evals. I think there's a lot of talks today, you know, at AI Engineer about quality, you know, kind of quality evals, right? With something you could do in uh, AI Foundry. And then there's a, a whole set of risk and safety uh, evaluators that we have, of which AI red, you know, red teaming agent is one of them. But we, we also have a lot of different class, you know, kind of classifiers uh, in terms of, of, you know, kind of both input as well as output, uh, because you want to check for both. Um, and then there's a specific set of, of evaluators we just uh, created for agentic applications as well. Like does the agent uh, following your instructions well? Is it, you know, uh, things like that. And then you can add your own custom evaluators. And uh, Nakamar showed you kind of like some of the mitigation strategies that you want to apply, right? So for example, there are guardrails and controls that you can have in your application. So once you've, you know, ran the AI red teaming agent, you figured out, well, actually 20% of, you know, like, stuff gets through, what do you do? Well, that's the point at which you can apply the guardrails, um, you know, to, to content filters and other, other capabilities that, again, we have in Azure AI Foundry that makes it easy for you to add those guardrails. And uh, among other ones, there's ones called like prompt shields, which are for to guard against prompt-based attacks, especially the kind that, you know, are you know, involved with AI red teaming. Um, and, we have time for maybe uh, one or two questions. I think yeah. we have like a minute, maybe. Yeah, we have two more, so. Yeah. Guardrail work under the hood. Uh-huh. Like, is it, is it like filtering after it gets the answer, or is it like before the LM even sees the prop? Just, just there, so there, there's, there's both kinds. Yeah, you can apply both, right? So you, Yeah, but the guardrail feature. Yes. How, um, do you know? I mean, I think they're they're both. I think we have uh, both filters, you know, for for the input end, as well as filters at the output end. So it, it'll so there are content filters, for example, you know, basically if people are typing in, you know, uh, like like a CBR or like you know like how to you know how to build a bomb kind of thing, right? So there are the input guardrails. But then there's also like uh, guardrails in terms of, well actually I want to make sure I'm not outputting like sexual content or something, right? So like there's also guardrails in terms of the output of the model as well. And that, that's what's happening under the hood with the guardrail feature or? Yeah, 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 with the guardrails. You implement several features to get that. Oh, no, no, you, you, so, so there are guardrails that, are, are, that AI Foundry offers directly. And yeah, so that's what's, that, that's what's happening under the hood. So you, you have the ability, for example, to, to just give the raw model raw inputs, right? And then if, if you turn off all content filters, and that, that was some of the example that actually Nakamura was showing, yep. where, yeah. So, so the guardrails are not in the model itself. The model is still the raw model, and the guardrails are actually kind of uh, outside it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, all right, thanks. I think we're out of time. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you for coming. Uh, if, you know, to, you know, definitely start, get started with the IRA teaming. If you're not doing it today, definitely get started. Uh, here's a link to the code, um, as well as the docs. And yeah, thank you for coming. And if, yeah, so if, if you have any questions, we will be, uh, you know, at the Microsoft booth, um, you know, different parts of, you know, today and tomorrow. So, Come yeah. find us. Thank you. Thank you.